All right, uh, everyone, welcome to the Influence to Influence episode number eight. So if you're watching this one, um, you've already seen Devin from TikTok, like two million plus followers, and that was a really good one. Um, and this, I say this every single time, but they are. This <laughs> one is a really, really good one. I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a little bit. Um, but this person has been, uh, there's certain people that you look at as like guides or stepping stones, and not necessarily to go over them, but people who have helped you to get higher, and they may not have known it. So, met Kevin, honestly a couple of years back. We've yeah. known each other, um, but there's always those locker room talks, we just talk about stuff, we talk about Billy Jean and ads, and we ended up working together. And I, I told him this in the beginning, but I really like him because apart from everything that he does, he's a figure that I look up to, not only with his family, but what he does in the community, but he said what he was going to do, and he did it. So, um, so what we do, my man, you just, I just want you to kind of introduce yourself what you do right now, and then we'll, you know, start with everything after. Yeah, so uh, Kevin Hendry here, owner and head trainer of Find Boy Fitness. Um, literally opened on December 16th, all the way up to March 13th, and then uh, COVID happened. Um, so we had closed for now the last, what, two, three months now. Um, but we were able to grow the, our, our gym within those 90 days, over 300 members, which is a heck of a blessing. Um, that just goes back to what I was telling you about nurturing relationships, not necessarily because you want something, just because you want to build something. Um, a lot of people go towards relationships the wrong way. Um, so what I do is I just make sure that I do my best at making sure I understand people's why in regards to fitness, health, nutrition. And what I've seen is when you can help somebody mentally get over those barriers, and once they break those barriers, they literally can make the rest of their life the best of their life. Mm. Perfect. So we're going to get into a lot. This is, this is the first, if you're in North Carolina, you've seen this dude celebrity, and he's just amazing. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's definitely the giddy touch. So can you just kind of tell us, man, like how was it, you know, growing up when you were young and, and, um, and yeah. Yeah, so I was, uh, my mom raised all three of us, my older brother, my younger sister, I was a little child. I um, was raised in Virginia Beach since I was six, all the way through 18. Uh, we went down the streets to East Carolina, played football for East Carolina. Um, shout out to those Pirates. Uh, I actually transferred uh, my senior year down to the University of South Florida for my last season. Uh, before getting a, a, a short shot with the uh, Washington Redskins. Um, so I've always been involved with um, fitness, just growing up in sports and so forth. Uh, but for me, man, it was always that, um, that number one. I always wanted to be number one in everything I did. Not so much for because of other people, just to prove to myself that uh, you really can find a way through anything. And that's the name of my gym, it's called Find A Way Fitness. Um, and I've helped people find a way through all kinds of stuff, depression, diseases, divorces, uh, you name it, because we're all battling something, whether it's on, on the line like or it's not. Um, and I just bring about that find a way mentality from the time I was young. Uh, I hate losing more than I love winning. So um, for me, it's just helping even my wife battling through cancer, battling through myself with depression. Um, Growing up, man, it was just like, it was always, I was on, I wasn't on my own, but I was on my own. That's uh, exactly what you, you know mean. what I'm saying? In a circle, but when you went home, it was, it was yeah, you Yeah, it's you versus you. So, I mean, I left the house 18, went to college, and kind of like, I had to become a man on my own. My dad wasn't really never around, so I had to cater towards my coaches. Um, and I've always had a coach since I played football in the sixth grade, so, um, it was kind of like just, I grew up, and I, and I, all, I look back at this now that I'm 32, I'm like, man, sometimes I don't even know how I got through some of this stuff. Because uh, I didn't have any advice, I didn't have any mentors, I didn't have somebody to look up to, in a sense. It was just figuring things out. And it comes full circle to now, where uh, now I'm still finding a way through a pandemic. So it's like, um, you can find an excuse or you can find a way. Man, and that's... Again, like I, and we, we were, again, we've been talking about this before, is like, this is, it's a cool opportunity because I, I realize how, you know, some of the conversations you probably have with yourself or when you're playing football, like, they're just small talk to you, but to other people, they're like, yes. what, you, you went to ECU and you played, like, that was like a kid's, trip. like, one of my really good, good friends, he just graduated from ECU and he would talk about football, and it's like, hearing something like that is, is, is big, but I, I've noticed what you've done and these are actually one of my three goals for this year. Normalization, 
um, and, and expansion as well as just really optimizing the thing. So you, I've noticed you normalize a lot of things. When it's like, I'm gonna make a gym, it's gonna be this, this best gym, we're gonna impact the community, and you do it. So like how, like how do you like normal, I know there's no cheat code, right? Yeah. But like, like where'd that come from? Because you know there's not that many people who can really do that. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite things, man, life is gonna do three things, um, and, and it's gonna happen whether you like it or not. It's gonna either, Make you change, right? You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to change, and you might not expect it. Um, you not might like the change, um, but life inevitably makes you change. So life made me change, and when my wife was about nine rounds of chemo, we were a fresh young couple just married, um, going through the highlights of, of of our lives together. And then when you get hit with something like that, life can change. That's when life made me change, and it shifted my mindset. My whole paradigm shifted to where health and fitness is not gonna be the reason why we're out, we, we leave this earth. Right. So not only was it when I was, did it made me more intentional about our time, because we all get 24 hours, some people are just playing, um, and I'm not here to play, I'm here to serve my community. And when you get intentional about serving your community, there's certain things, when you call them forces, positive vibes, God, all love, whatever you wanna call it, Ooh. they can grow. <laughs> Hey, I'm together, man. He was telling me how he started meditating, and that's something I've been doing for a while now. Uh, just being sitting still, because once you wake up, you see your phone, you got 36 notifications, Facebook, um, TikTok, you got Instagram, you got emails, you got DMs, you got all kind of craziness. So a lot of times, you just got to focus on you and not worry about the phone, because the phone is just a whole other world that you have to enter and distract you from what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so getting back to your question, when that thing, when that happened to me, my wife just posted about when we announced um, that she was cancer free, and it just made me reflect like then, man, we were 27, 28, and even the community then, the community then raised twenty thousand dollars for our medical bills. The community was that that? They just they just kind of started because they've been they've been through the story of the whole thing, and like I was always vulnerable. I was always willing to put myself out there. Right. Because I knew the story was going to change a lot of lives, which it, to this day it has. Because from there, I started training at a women's boutique gym, and I grew to the number two franchise in the nation, over 210 locations. Um, and then the gym was sold, so I opened up my own gym, and I've already surpassed what I thought I was going to do, which was 200 members in the first 90 days. I hit 300 members. Um, so sometimes you got to aim for the stars and land on the moon, and a lot of times people don't optimize their time. They don't optimize their energy and they don't optimize what they're trying to do every single minute of the day. So when you see your schedule, where are where where is it lacking? Where's your schedule lacking? Um, and you realize if you realize how fast life really goes by. Um, and, I, and I and I realized just by watching my son grow up, um, you don't have that much time. And even though you think you have that much time, you really put it down as upfront investment for your back end, so for your family and so forth. And uh, so that's always on my mind. I'm a big picture guy, and I can already see my gym expanding. I can already see somebody buying my gym for a franchise. I can already see my family. Uh, I can see, I, I saw the time of my life from so teaching after eight years. Um, you gotta see it to believe it, right? And, uh, and that kind of long meditation, um, it, things just get still, and the answers start coming out. It's weird, but it works. So if you just, Think it, you will achieve it. If you think it and you truly believe it, man, the world, the world just conforms to what you want and um, not what you need. It's, it's crazy because like, um, oh, it's not really crazy. It's, it's normal, but it's crazy to other people. But like it is, there's a feeling when you get it, when you really start believing and you really just like, when people ask like, oh, like, I can't believe you're doing this. Or, Are you really going to do it? It's like, yeah, it's, like, it's already... One of the things I learned, so I can't, I can't remember what it is, but like when you think about things, think of it, you've already done it, you, you're just going to get it. Yeah. So it's like, for example, you've already, you've already created a, a 30 plus location franchise, yeah. you've got to do it again. Yeah. And, and honestly, like those type of things are what allows you to like really propel. And not only, again, it's not just a gym, it's the fact that people are able to come here different walks of life, different ways and different beliefs. And you see, again, you see it more than me, yeah. like I see it through the pictures and videos but they're able to be themselves and yeah. create the opportunity. So what do you think, what are some opportunities that you got? Because one of my things that I was saying is um, 
we have the opportunity to give or create other opportunities. Mm -hmm. So like, what are some opportunities that you think that you've gotten? And you've mentioned some of them that really come, like put stuff together, whether it's through college, whether it's through football, or whether it's through relationships. Yeah. I think for me, uh, it was the opportunity to even begin training. Because I was training myself for years and years and years. Right. Obviously, you have to be physically fit to play these sports. But when the opportunity arrived for me to become a trainer, because um, I was transitioning from corporate America, and uh, I said, you know what, I train already. What, how hard could it be to train somebody else? That leap. Yeah, so that one opportunity created the first person that said, Kevin, you changed my life. And that person didn't know that one, that person. How's everybody doing? Hope you are enjoying the interview, a little intermission here. Um, the camera had cut out. The, um, you know, we just had some technical difficulties, but we still found a way and we're still going. So again, please tune in. Make sure you're liking, commenting, sharing this as uh, it's a great story and also just being able to witness what he's doing. But anyways, back to the interview. The person that said that, she changed my life the same day. And from there on, man, I just 10X'd it. I just 10X'd it. And I told myself, I want to see how many people I can help before I die. That's my uh... But what are some, what are some habits that you're, everybody kind of listening, technology always works, and sometimes if you want it to work, it's not going to work. But we're still going. Yeah. Um, we'll just keep continuing the audio. But what are some habits that you do to really make sure that you're at your peak performance? Like we're in your office right now, you have amazing colors, and we're going to talk about like how it came to have this gym, and you have the posters, the motivation, but like what things do you surround yourself? Um, I think for me, um, and what, what, what drives me and, and kind of like my f framework is I always go back to my, my, five, my five words um, that got me to anywhere in life mm -hmm. as I look back. And the first word is dedication, just being dedicated to your craft, right? right. If you want to be a marketing agency, you better be dedicated to doing everything you need to do every single day. You want to be a professional athlete, mm -hmm. you got to be dedicated to performing your craft and understanding what it takes to be the number number one what does it take to be number one um like i said i hate losing more than i love winning and number two is the first loser and i'm so competitive that i want to see how i can maximize myself it's not what you can do it's not what the trainer down the street can do it's not what the gym can do it's what can kevin do to optimize himself in order to optimize changing as many lives as you can mm -hmm. so dedication just being a res responsibility and just being responsible for saying hey you want to meet at 12 30 on tuesday make sure you're here at 12 30 on tuesday mm -hmm. right being responsible for your actions um being responsible for these people's lives I right think, yeah, yeah, it's being, just, yeah, yeah it's not just about it life is not what you can do it's what you can do for others so i'm responsible for a lot of not only lives but a lot of families that count on me for their health and fitness guidance um e uh, energy Energy is so huge. You can literally walk up to somebody and feel their energy before they say a word. So if you understand that like attracts like, positive vibrations are real. And if you're if you, if you're stressed out, if you're going through something, give yourself a 24 hours. Give myself 24 hours if I'm going through something mm -hmm. to kind of reset, recalibrate, and do what I got to do so my energy can be back on top oh, to so be able to serve. That. Yeah, yeah, always, always. You can't just keep pounding on, pounding on, pounding on. I've done it. And it'll drain you. So you just get rid of it for that 24 hours, release it, and then get back on track. So your energy is very important, not only for you, but the people around you. Right. Um, so if you've ever been to one of my classes, you'll see it's electrifying because I'm doing what God has called me to do. And the energy is a natural vibration. It's not something I have to kind of drink a massive load of coffee or a pre-workout. Yeah. It's just, it just starts. It's right. like, I remember Beyonce said one time when she gets on stage, something just comes over her. Uh -huh. That's the same thing with me. Exactly. Like something just comes over me like it's time to go to work. Even Tony Robbins, I've seen the video before he gets on. He yeah, he has a little, like LeBron. Yeah, LeBron yeah, has his thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. You do a little <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So everybody has their own energy and the way of, of going about things. And then A kind of works with E is the attitude. The attitude determines your altitude and your attitude has to be optimistic. You can't just go out here and think everything's going to fall into your lap. You got to be optimistic. Your attitude has to be right. You got to stay positive. It's hard out here, especially during a time like right now. But you got to stay positive through all the, all, all the BS and all the distractions, mm -hmm. the world of distractions. 
because um, it's inevitable that something's going to happen. Flat tire, right? Yeah. It's inevitable that something's going to happen. Your, your son gets sick. Whatever it is, you got to find the silver lining in everything. If not, you're going to be crushing your attitude. Your mentality is going to be gone. And then M, my M, always, we always come back to the motivation. Like what motivated me to this point? What's going to motivate me past this point? Because um, motivation is huge, man. You can attack on, attach on to some people like Eric Thomas and get motivated. And like, damn, man, ah, let's go, right? Um, you got to find what motivates you and connect it to your why. My why is because I want to help thousands, if not millions of people globally. In order to do that, I got to start with my community. And then from my community, I go to the state. From the state, I go national. National, I go to the world. Um, so it starts in the, as a process. You got to be motivated through that process. So my five words, dedication, responsibility, energy, my attitude, and my motivation spell out dream, and I'll never stop dreaming. Uh, I want to make sure to put that in. And that, like, I hope when you're listening, seeing, and also taking ownership, like you just mentioned, Taking ownership is like, yes, we could be blaming technology right now for everything. Yeah. That's everything but we still roll. You gotta find a way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a perfect name. It's like, okay, the camera's not working. Sounds good. We're still rolling. Yeah. Okay. And if you're watching this with audio, we're still going. Um, and again, it's, it's a really good opportunity to like hear some of these things because I know Kevin, but I don't know Kevin, but I'm finding a way to yeah. know Kevin. Yeah. And like the things that he's saying, it's really not to rah rah and just so you can have like a temp, you know, your, your dose of motivation for the day, but it's things that you can really think about or allow you to propel like even yeah, more. Sure. Um, so like I guess for, let's just say for people who, let's just say when somebody's watching this, they want to start a gym, right? Of course, I know you can't tell them A to Z because A to Z will be here for, for days and days. Yeah. But what are some things that, what are some five things that you've learned starting a gym that are either misconceptions or like you kind of stopped and said, I did not know you ever do that, or things that you had to overcome to get to where you are right now in this gym. Um, so for the most part, it's just um, contracts, the legality, insurances, mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't want to make it sound like it's harder than it really is. Mm -hmm. It's just for me having the right people in place and delegating as well. Um, to where people and their strengths. So I'm really good at delegating um, somebody that's going to be coming in and helping me support train. I'm really good at de dedicate, uh, delegating the operations manager who was my wife, right? And it's like, it just works, naturally works. Um, so I, I want to say, back to your question, five things that I didn't think of what was going to happen because I took the necessary steps um, when I was a trainer at another gym, I acted as if, as if I was already an owner. You already had the, you already had the mindset. mindset. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is, this is, I didn't tell her this, but I always told myself, okay, this is my gym, how I want to run this gym. And I did it for two years straight. So when it was time to transition into my own gym, I was already mentally running a gym. Yeah. Now it's just a, whatever paperwork we need and whatever we had to do to do it. But from there, man, it's just like uh, you got to switch your like, what do you what do you deep down inside want to be when at the end game? Mm -hmm. For me, I don't want anything from anybody, but I want to change everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think health and fitness is probably at its peak right now. If you never thought about it, your health is probably the number one thing you can work. It, it is. the. It's not probably your health is your wealth. I don't care how much money, how many cars, houses, clothes, motorcycles, whatever it is, you don't have anything if you don't have your health. And that's what I want to get through to people um, because it's, it's, it's vital at this point and it's serious. And I think everybody sees that now, mm -hmm. meaning that they got to stay in their house. Right. <laughs> when was the last time you had to stay in your house with your wife, your kids, uh -huh. for 24 yeah. hours? Yeah. You like, talked about that with a couple of people. It's not like you're grounded and everybody's still grounded. Like, no, <laughs> We're all grounded. Yeah, we did something wrong and we're all grounded, but it's it's again like that silver lining. Like we can you can sit and mope, yeah. but you know, or you can pivot. So like yeah, like like yourself, you mentioned you've pivoted. So what did you do like as soon as this came on? Yeah. Um so probably the, the week before or probably like four or five days before they announced that everybody has to close, I pivoted to online. ASAP. And when I say I pivoted, I, I'm talking, I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning, serving my community online at 5.30 a.m. every single day. There's nobody else doing that. How do I know? Because I do market research. 
Um, so I was able to pivot so fast that it became normal after three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. So we already had a new norm before everybody else. Normalized it again. Yeah. So, uh, and then I had, um, I actually uh, reinvested back into the community and bought these find a way workout bags and I sent them to all my members for free on me so that way we can enhance the online workouts and we can do our find a way workout Wednesdays. Um, and then now I'm transitioning into the parking lot where I'm trying to fit close to 350 people in the, in the four slots, which I'm going to find a way. It's just a matter of time. So I'm doing my first run next week. So um, life is always about that pivot, just like in basketball. That pivot is so important, right? That pivot is so important. And that's like my word of the whole pandemic is pivot, because whether you want it to or not, businesses, lives, everybody had a pivot whether you're, you're going to school now everything's online right whether you're going to work and you're working from home whether you want to go out to eat you got to order it to bring it to home mm -hmm. so every business is pivoted. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah it's like checkmate yeah it's literally forced yeah and, and yeah and it's and, it, and it's real and it's raw and it's sad that some businesses aren't going to make it and, and it's just nature of, of what happened nobody expected mm -hmm. to open a business up in december and go through a pandemic in march right if that wasn't my business plan, I would say, yeah, I was ready for it. Nobody was ready for it. But that's when that whole find a way mentality comes. Like there's two things in life. I don't care what you're going through. There's two things you can choose, an excuse or you can find a way. And I'm teaching my members in my community how you can find a way through anything. Um, and, and, and it's so powerful once somebody attaches onto that mentality and they see once that first win of finding a way, whether it's their first push up, whether it's their first pull up, whether it's their first mile without stopping, whether it's uh, talking with their spouse versus arguing with their spouse, whatever it is, they found a way to enhance the relationship, enhance their health, whatever it is, we find a way over here. And I think a lot of people attach on to that real message of um, our story and how we had to find a way through cancer, find a way to depression, find a way through uh, your gym getting sold and you have to open your own gym, right? right. Um, it, it, it's so powerful, man. And I think we're just on the brink of it. We haven't even got close to the peak. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, literally, we've been open 90 days in gym and then 90 days outside the gym. So yeah. online. And we're growing through, we've had a pivot to online memberships. Right. Like I didn't even <laughs> mention that. Like, we yeah. grew through the pandemic. So that was powerful to see, like people really believe that I got now I got clients in California, Texas, um, Boston. Like uh, that's incredible, man. And, so uh, the pivot even allowed you to see perspective. Yeah, you just turned around. You're like, oh, I did not know all this was right behind me. Yeah. So now I'm gonna enhance my online platform to where my members can log on and find a way fitness app. If you're traveling, you can log on. You want to do cardio? You want to do upper body, lower body? Whatever it is, and everything's ready to roll. I just got to record the videos. <laughs> you see, that's a fist bump. That's like, and that's so important because it's like there's, uh, we know a guy, Hormozy, Alex. Yeah, yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monster. He was talking about like the stories of this is a perfect opportunity, as we said. This is a perfect opportunity to throw in the towel. It's okay. You know, no, no one could have thought Because you can save the pandemic. Yeah, you yeah. Can, this is an easy fallout. You can, I remember when I say easy, you can easily say that it's that. But at the end of the day, think about the stories that are going to be told from mm. people who came from this. Like, this is something that mm. you're going to tell kids around the campfire. Like, yeah. that, what were you doing during 2020? That's actually when I could have did this. And yeah. that led to one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after you finish, like, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. I want to add in a new question. I would not ask this, and I didn't even prepare you for this one. Is The first one is, what are three words or this, that describe you and who you are and what you stand for? Um, three words that would describe me is uh, I'm probably the most optimistic person you ever meet. Mm -hmm. You can put me in the you can put me in the woods with a bear. You better help the bear. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so optimistic. Um, so optimist uh, optimism is like something that I've, I've harbored. I've, what is it? Harvard or armored? Or? Harvard. I think it's Harvard. Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so optimism, man. Uh, energy. My energy is like out of this world. I developed this energy through intermittent fasting where your body is always healing itself. Um, and I've gotten it down to where sometimes I eat just one meal a, a day. And what happens is the food influences your mood. A lot of people don't understand that what you put into your body um, has a, 
a, a, a direct correlation to how you feel throughout the day mm -hmm. and how your mind swings, mood swings, especially with women with hormones. Mm -hmm. So my energy, I always protect my energy. My energy is the number one thing that I think has helped us to help me grow to where I am now. Um, and you can ask any of my members, once they come into my gym and they go through that first workout, it's not the workout that sells them, it's the experience mm -hmm. of seeing this guy is freaking nuts in a good way. He's yeah. dancing, he knows everybody's names, he's true. electrifying, his music is rocking. And it's like, once you get everybody on one accord, man, it's just a powerful 45 minute session. You got, you got customers forever in a right. good way because you're helping them with their health. Um, so optimism, energy, and I think for me, um, another uh, last word is real, um, authentic. Uh, I find that when I'm, when I transitioned into being an owner and just, and even before, as I told you, I was mentally taking reps as an owner when I was at the other gym. Um, it's just being real transparent, raw and uncut. Uh, Cause people see through the fluff and I want to make sure when I, when I pass away, people understand that that guy kept it real. It didn't matter what was going on. Um, and, and my members will tell you right now, Kevin will call you out if you plan, because I don't play with health. If you're going to show up to the gym, you better be ready to work. And I'm going to be real with you. If you want to be real with your results, you better be real with me. And I think when you, when you keep it transparent and you keep it real with people, they respect you that much more because they don't have to figure, figure you out. They're going to either accept you for who you are or they not, might not like it, but at least they got the truth. Mm -hmm. So energy, optimism, and being real, man, I think just off the cuff of what you're asking me, man, I think that's something that I can harbor at this time, at this time of my life. Um, that's where I'm at. And I think that's the last thing that you just said is really important. And it's because, you know me, that's something that I've been using a lot in my business. And I learned it from past experiences at the bar. Just care, you know, respect, honesty, caring, faith in God, responsibility. Yeah. Because I learned in, in different, it's the same in every industry. There's people who are shady or everything. Oh, yeah. There's certain circumstances where I'm 100% honest with people, whether it's where I'm from, what I can do, what I can't do. And the reaction is just like, I didn't think that you would, you know what I mean? Like, people expect, you know, there's always a right hook at the yeah. end. Yeah. Like, you show me, here's everything. Yeah. Like that. Um, so the next one is, who, in, who or what influenced you to influence others as well as some words of advice for, you know, the, the, you know, the people watching this who have been laid off, the people who are watching this who graduate, graduate from college and they're not going to get a job because things are going to have to kind of wait, the people whose internship just got, you know, taken away, people who's at home health, who they're shifting, they're people who are prospering right now. So what are some, I know that's loaded, what are some words of advice and um, who or what inspired, influenced you to influence others? Uh, so my first influence on my life was my mom, watching her and what she had to do to sacrifice, which I probably won't know everything she had to do to sacrifice to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. But I remember vividly, we had one Christmas where I knew that's the first time um, I felt like, because uh, my mom always did a good job of making sure everything was okay. Mm -hmm. But when it came around to Christmas, you know how families get together, it's fun, family, friends, all that good stuff, gifts, interaction. We actually had to go to a, I'll never forget, it's a pool hall called Q Masters. And we just ordered food and played pool as a family for Christmas. And I was like, wow. Um, obviously we were broke because we're at a pool hall for Christmas. And I think I, I was young, so that's like one of the first times I was like, I don't think too many people celebrate Christmas at a pool. Yeah. But my mom was just trying to get through a divorce, getting cheated on, raising three young kids on her own before finding my stepdad. And she just influenced me to like never give up, always find, I don't want to use find a way so much because I use it so much, <laughs> but she found a way, man, to make us feel as normal as we could growing up and I was a heathen I was bad growing up like I'm gonna be real with you I was like doing everything you weren't supposed to do right not nothing crazy but just like being at school acting up at school you exactly. know just doing things the wrong the way left, the left. yeah I went right every time um and, and she just influenced me that I mean she's a small Filipino lady um and she's just got into the finances in, in regards to car dealerships and she peaked her career and then she had to pivot because the whole thing got sold. So she's been at this company for 15, 20 years. 
and uh, it gets sold. So she has to go back to ground zero because she didn't go to college, right? Yeah. Um, she didn't do all. She didn't. She didn't get. She's smart as, as ever, but she just showed me like with the de determination um, and a willing, a, a grit and a willing to fight. And that's why I, I really love every underdog story I come across because those are the people that make this world in my opinion. Um, so between my mom and my wife battling nine rounds of chemo, it was like a nine, nine round fight. If you can see somebody battle chemo, not only battle chemo, but while they're pregnant with their first child, man, that doesn't shift you in some kind of way and motivate you and influence you. I, I'll never forget, man. It was like watching my wife. I married my, my wife was beautiful. I married her two months later. We found out having a baby boy. Two weeks later, we found out she had cancer. So from then, like you see her hair start falling out. You see her nails start going black. You see she's fatigued from walking up the stairs. You see she's crying because she doesn't want to go through this no more. Like you see that emotional pain, trauma unfolding because I mean, I remember being on the stairs just crying one time because my older son and my wife were going at it. I'm in the middle of it. Um, she's pregnant. She had cancer, just got back with chemo. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And I just broke down and started crying, man. And that was the first time as a man, like I was just like, I, 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 can, I can put up with a lot. Right. But emotionally, man, just trying to work, corporate America, make sure my wife's okay. I'm on FMLA, which is Family and Medical Leave Assistance, so they're not paying me while we're battling this thing. And that's why I told you the community backed us and, and they raised through GoFundMe $20,000 to support us. They had a meal train helping us delivering homemade meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It, people came and cleaned clean our house. It was amazing, man. So my mom and my wife are the two most influential people in my life, and uh, I owe it to them. It feels good to be able to say that I retired my wife because she was sick of teaching, not because she didn't love it. It's because they didn't have the structure. They weren't getting paid for what they were supposed to be, what they were doing. So I said, I got to get her out of here in order to take her to the next level. So the next thing you know, I start, our, I start finding way fitness, and guess what? She comes back around and starts finding way travel. Wow. How powerful was that? Not only did I hire my wife to work with me, but my wife started her own business as a find a way travel. So now she books our, our clients to travel. Yeah, it's just, and it's the opportunity that you like. <laughs> it's just brought. So I want you to see this, and this is going to be very valuable, valuable content because when it happens, I'm gonna, just like I did last time. Yeah. When I say it, I'm going to say it now, and you're going to see it when you come back. But under one umbrella, just that one opportunity of me wanting to train and that lady saying, you changed my life, it brought find a way fitness. You got find a way travel. You got find a way nutrition that's coming. You got find a way cryo that's coming. You got find a way athletics. And then finally, to bring it all together, we're going to start a find a way foundation to help other people, um, young kids, entrepreneurs, whatever it is. We want to help people find a way through life, not, not for what we can do, but what we can do for them. As the whole thing comes together, that like that's and it's. I'm like lots of words, and this isn't like any acting or anything like that. But it's really like that stuff when you hear about that, it just like lets you know like okay, like it's possible. Like I, it, we mentioned when we first talked at Starbucks, how he would tell me the plan and everything. He's like, look, the people are ready. The people walked in, they're like card in hand, ready to give it to you right then and there. Then you step into this place and you just feel the energy. Because, yes, this was the vision that he's had, but to think of all the thousands and hundreds of hands that have had to come mm -hmm. together for this to come, mm -hmm. like, it's powerful. And for me personally, like, I, stuff like that just lets me, like, really put everything into perspective and to really just be able to take, I may not be starting a gym, but really find a way to really be used for everything. Yeah. Really find that way to really incorporate into my life and then be able to just go. So... Again, man, I commend you for that a lot. For sure. um, what are just some words of, of advice for the people? Again, like any age, age range. Because, yeah, I mean, you already said a lot. I guess yeah. the story that you have is amazing. But what are some words of advice for people that are going through this stuff right now or just that they can listen um, in the future? Um, going through this whole pandemic is, I mean, it's new for everybody. I, I don't think even our parents had to go through a pandemic. Um, but you should be coming out of this pandemic with some type of new mindset, whether you were an employee and you now got furloughed and you have nobody paying you, how do I figure out a way to pay myself, right? You have to find a way 
So if whatever you didn't like before this, you got an opportunity to fix it. We all, this is a global reset. It's not just Raleigh, it's not just, it's not just Florida, it's everybody. So this is the perfect opportunity to pivot, which is the word of the, of the day, and pivot has been the word for the whole pandemic I've been going through. You have an opportunity to, to quadruple anything you're doing right now. The last two, three months you've been at home, you have so much opportunity to self-develop, you have so much opportunity to network, you have so many times to start something new. And I think so many people are so, oh, so um, content with what they have. They're content on, on, on settling. And um, I don't think people realize the time we're living in right now. You can post one video and go viral and the next thing your life has changed just like that. That's what the last person, Devin, mentioned 2017, 2016. I think I was just graduating out of high school. He had 100,000 followers on cruise. And then he was saying from that day is when like, put out the brakes and just went all the ass. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, man, it's just like, I watch, I can't even keep up now, but now TikTok is like, you can post one video and people can pay you through TikTok. Like, being yourself. For just being yourself. Like, it's just mind blowing how many opportunities there are. Like, I just started investing into the stock market. Mm -hmm. Like, there are some stocks right now that are very low. And I know two things. In order to flip some, you buy a low and you sell it high. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not rocket science. I'm just willing to try it. I, I always give myself the motto is I'll try anything once. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's so many things that you should be thinking about. And if you were happy going into a pandemic um, and you, and you want to enhance your life, all you, all you literally have to do is think about what you want to, what you want to be, what you want to do, meditate on it. Thank you. Write them down in affirmations because the world wants to help you, mm -hmm. but you got to help us. And tell us what do you want from us? You gotta market it to us. You gotta show us. You gotta live it. You gotta you gotta breathe it. You gotta be dedicated. You gotta be responsible. You gotta have that energy, have that attitude, and that motivation to show us what you want the world to see. And it's so weird, man, because like things just start happening. I don't know if you ever had like something you wanted to happen, and then small things start happening. Oh, this person knows how to do this. Or this person knows that person that puts me in a position to do this. Exactly. Like, I'm going to be on the news in the next week just from one of my members that it's a wild connection. Like, this thing is built by the community for the community. And from the red paint you see from getting discounts from the paint store to the sign you see every time I go out, I, set, I tap it, it says, time to serve. One of my members owns, a, owns um, a business that makes signs. One of my members owns a cleaning service. They come and clean our gym. One of my members, I mean, this thing, my attorney is my member. My, everybody, my accountant, everybody. It's just, it's, a community. it's, it's, a, it's really a community. And I, and I feel like uh, there's so much value within this group of people because uh, we all just want to get healthy. And I just happen to be very good at training. And, and then I'm just a connector for a lot, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, so don't ever think you're not good enough. Don't ever think you don't have what it takes. Don't ever think that you don't have the proper tools because sometimes you got to jump off that cliff and find out if you have wings on the way down. Sometimes you have to jump off that cliff and find out if you have wings on the way down. And a lot of people are just going to stand at the top of the cliff and just look and just look and just look. Me, I would have jumped five minutes ago. Next thing you know, I'm here. Mm. There was a guy I was listening to. He was talking about he wants to do a podcast. His name is Chase Hero. Big Ethan guy. He was like, he wants to do a podcast where in the beginning it's a pool, you jump in. But he's not gonna tell the person if the pool is hot, cold, or warm. And the people who just jump in without even thinking about it, those are the people that he wants to be around yeah. because they're not saying it gets yeah. So man, um, you know, where can people find you? So I'm gonna put the socials in the, the links like down below. Yeah. You know, where can people find you or what can they be looking forward to? Uh, today is May 27th. 27th. Yep. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Find A Way Fitness. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Kevin Gidry, Instagram, KGidry45. Um, if you're a local, you definitely be able to Google us and see it. Find us within the next five seconds. Um, and feel free to come check this out. Anybody that hears this video, come to my gym. 30 days free on me. That's how much I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to sacrifice 30 days to show you that you can do it. But you just got to show up. There's the four rules that I always tell people that come to my gym. Rule number one, never miss a Monday. Rule number two, work out at least three times a week. Rule number three, never go three days without working out. Rule number four, find a way.
Boom. That's it.